Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Brelsford from SMB Nation coming to you from the Seattle area. And today's uh, a special day um, for our weekly webinar series. It's 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. in the uh, over on the East Coast. So thank you for joining us. And, and then um, late afternoon, early evening over in Europe. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And especially a thank you, given I know many of you are busy today trying to uh, crowd in a bunch of work so quite frankly, in North America or in the U.S., you can have one leg out the door tomorrow afternoon for the start of the Memorial Day weekend, a three-day holiday, a major holiday. So I, I can appreciate how valuable your time is today. Thank you once again. Um, today's special also because uh, life has happened, world events have happened, and it it plays uh, in an in a appropriate way into the, the exact conversation we're having. So we're going to weave in the Oklahoma City tornado story into today's presentation. A couple of comments up front um, that I, I think you'll find exciting and a way for you to help, as well as uh, we'll, we'll weave those questions into the core presentation, and I encourage your questions about that. Now, in terms of asking your questions, please use the chat feature. Um, Heather's over in the control room running the webinar. She'll gather the questions and forward those on to myself to ask, and I'll ask those as we're able. Um, with that said, uh, let's just jump right into it. So, uh, Steve, I uh, want to welcome you and thank you for joining us on Disasters Happen. Ensure you have recovery options at your fingertips. And again, in a respectful way, it, this webinar couldn't happen at a better time. Does that make sense? It makes sense, and thank you, Harry. I'm I'm glad to be here and speak with you and the rest of SMB Nation. Um, I think it's interesting that usually my job entails talking to people after disasters happen, and it's it's unfortunate because most of the time when we look at issues like um, Oklahoma and uh, the, Jap the Japan tsunamis, uh, Superstorm Sandy, these are these are things that we can't really plan for it. We, we don't really know when they're going to happen. We don't know how they're going to affect us. We simply know that at some point in the future, there's a likelihood that something like this might happen to us. And what does that mean to our business? What does that mean to your clients? Um, what does that mean to, to how you earn your daily, your daily bread? Um, well, fortunately, we're going to talk a little bit about that and some of the concepts that go into, um, in this case, a disaster recovery scenario. Uh, basically, the title of this is Recover Anytime, Anywhere. And I kind of wanted to go and talk about disaster recovery, um, business continuity, a lot of these concepts in terms of what we're seeing today. And uh, just as keeping this on kind of a, a helpful way because, as you pointed out, we want to look at this respectfully. We want to, to approach this in a way, how can we help? Um, I, I wanted to bring in some of the resources up front that people might consider um, donating to or offering some volunteer time or resources. Uh, American Red Cross, of course, is great. Um, they're always on the ground in disasters like Oklahoma. Um, also, the Information Technology Disaster Resource Center uh, with Joe Hillis, that's another good organization for disaster recovery. And then also StorageCraft, uh, we're doing what we know best. We know about um, backup and recovery software, and that's our, our product line, and so it's, well, it's one part of our product line. But um, what we're doing is offering a, a free download through June 5th to um, give people the ability to install and back up and recover, or not even install. This is a Shadow Protect ID edition, so you wouldn't have to install anything, but you simply download the software, use it to back up um, systems that are in jeopardy, recover systems, whatever you need to do, this is free and it's available to, to anybody that should need it. Absolutely. No, well, thank you for the kind offer. Appreciate you stepping up in certainly a timely and, again, appropriate way. Um, uh, Steve, what I wanted to highlight is um, I've, I've looked pretty deeply into the Oklahoma story this week, and um, we, you know, of course, the first question is what, what can SMB Nation do? And right. the, the initial, uh, 
reaction, I get excited, I want to help. And, and the initial reaction is, well, let's marshal our customer list and, and encourage people to get on trains, planes, and automobiles and, and go to Oklahoma City and help. And I talked with some experts in the field and, and uh, like I say, uh, Grace Schroeder out of New York at idea2.com, a CRM system. And the more we talked yesterday, the more it became apparent that, you know, um, the, these, well, after the TV cameras leave, there's still a lot of chaos on the ground. These things take a long time to, to heal, and we better let experts do what they do best. And what, what they really need is cash. And, and an, an analogy I'd give you is that um, it, it, it'd be like being a pro athlete and saying, I'm going to start a foundation to help, to help kids. Um, but how many times do you hear of such foundations being mismanaged um, versus uh, Warren Buffett has pledged his personal fortune as a donation to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, and, and essentially saying that, hey, we don't need another foundation in giving. We, let's, let's let the pros do what they do best and we trust them to do what they do best. So that's where we landed. So, so folks, I mean, I know, I know the, the instinct is to grab your German shepherd and put him on a plane and, and go help uh, dig around, but um, to some extent, that's already in place and, and the real pros are doing that. So I just wanted to give a website that, that we landed on to supplement your conversation. It's very simple. Um, OK.gov forward slash OK strong. And I'll repeat that throughout the webinar, but very simple, ok.gov forward slash ok strong. And it's a comprehensive uh, uh, central site uh, discussing your donation options. And, and once again, as is all too often the case, the very best thing you can do is, is donate cash. So Steve, with that said, uh, we'll, we'll bring that up again a little bit later, but let's, let's jump into the uh, the, the webinar, and I'll maybe ask you some contextual questions as, as we go along. That would be great, Harry. Thank you very much. And again, that was ok.gov slash okstrong, correct? Correct. All right. Okay. Hey, and so, Steve, but before you get going, I already have a question. Yeah. Is, there a down, is there a download link for this trial? This is from our good friend Tyler uh, Peetler out of Canada. Is there a download link for this trial? Um, yes, and you know what? Um, I'll get that, and we'll post it in just a minute. So we'll have that okay. for you. It's I'm sure you can find there. it if you go on our website, but we will definitely get that available in this in this presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Let's proceed. Okay, um, I'm told that the the link is storagecraft.com forward slash storm s t o r m. So that should be good. All right, so let's talk about, um, well, I was thinking earlier, uh, you know how it is when you come up on a webinar and you're, you're thinking about all the, the issues that you might want to address. And as you mentioned, Harry, you, you go, you, a lot of things run through your mind. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be great if we had some way of managing every contingency? And you know, just being able to cover in, in any event, no matter how big or how small, because we know that most disasters are small things like power outages, human error, um, hardware malfunction. Uh, it's not often that we have these large events like Oklahoma, but in any event, they all have the same kind of um, features. They, they all disrupt the business. They all um, usually destroy information and hardware. Um, there, there's definite problems here. So it would be great if we had some kind of a, a contingency plan for every disaster. And I think that's what the StorageCraft Recoverability Solution is supposed to be doing. It's basically putting at your fingertips a number of products so that you can have a flexible disaster recovery plan to meet any contingency. We've got the StorageCraft Shatter Protect Backup Agent. That's the Shatter Protect 5 software that is compatible with the Windows 8 and Server 2012, the latest and greatest from Microsoft. Um, also the new hardware standards, the UEFI and GPT standards. Also we have the StorageCraft Image Manager 6, which joins with that to manage those backups and it does replication, consolidation, 
Um, it verifies your backup chains for uh, hidden data corruption. It also sets retention policies and it automatically notifies you in the event of problems. So basically all of these things are coming together to kind of build a recoverability solution. You've got your storage craft cloud services. This is your off-site replication target, um, which we'll talk about later in this and how you might use this to um, complement your existing disaster recovery plans. Um, also, we have the StorageCraft CMD, which is the uh, web server monitoring and management tool. And this kind of ties everything together under one umbrella, so you have kind of a single pane of glass for managing your overall system. Um, it, it's nice, uh, there's this quote here, knowing you have a fully bootable recovery solution that's ready to go, regardless of the type of dilemma you face, brings peace of mind when it's needed most. And it's really nice to have that kind of insurance plan um, just covering every contingency. I don't think it's possible to prevent disasters. I'm sure a lot of people would like to prevent them and, and there are some ways to mitigate them, but I think it's nice that in the event a disaster happens, you can pick up and keep going after the disaster. So that's something that brings peace of mind and helps you to feel um, well, it helps you to sleep at night. Let me put it that way. Um, the storage crash recoverability solution kind of is broken out into um, two parts in the next few slides. This slide is highlighting a lot of the things that happen locally. This would be kind of your on-premise, on-site um, user tools. Uh, the storage craft virtual boot technology, which allows you to create virtual machines off of a local backup image. Uh, the StorageCraft Head Start Restore technology, which lets you pre-stage your virtual machine uh, as a virtual machine, um, your backup images, so that you can fail over if you needed to, or if you wanted to use this as a planned migration tool. Like you mentioned, Harry, we have these contra holidays going on, and I know as IT professionals, we'd sure love to have a time to go out on Labor Day or July 4th or whenever and just spend time with our family enjoying the holiday. And Head Start Restore kind of lets you do that because if you have a server migration this weekend and you know that you're going to be spending 8 to 12 hours on this server migration just trying to get things cut over, well, Head Start Restore could reduce that time for you by letting you create the cutover now during normal business hours. And then this weekend you take your last incremental backup off of your production server shut that down, apply that incremental to your Head Start Restore that's, that's pre-staged on the new system and spin up the new system in a matter of minutes instead of hours or days. So really a handy tool for local use. Um, well, Steve, Steve, now, you know, part, part of my storytelling about IT guys work on major holiday weekends and, and, and there's, there's, there's always going to be some of that. It's, you know, there's phone systems and, and, and so on. There's other things we have to fuss with. but Part of my storytelling included what I always felt was a family secret that if if you take July 4th on, let's just pick a date like July 18th, they say that's my July 4th, um, there's no lines at the zoo, okay? <laughs> Disneyland, you, you can get on the rides really quickly at Disneyland, right? You, you, you can see more animals, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're getting the silver lining. I like that. That's good. I appreciate that, Harry. Um, I was going to mention the next the StorageCraft hardware independent restore technology, and I think if you're if you're looking at no lines at the zoo um, for the 18th, you're still going to appreciate the fact that the HIR technology is is basically gold, in that if you're moving from a physical to a virtual system. Um, or a, a virtual to a physical system. If you've got a laptop from the CEO of your client that's crashed and he needs to get up and running, it's not going to take you, you know, multiple hours to get this thing going and cut into your time at the zoo. It's going to it's going to be a very quick recovery because of the ability for StorageCraft to use this hardware independent restore and restore to dissimilar environments. Um, really a big plus. Um, I think the point that we all like to, 
to make is that if you have a backup solution, that's great. I mean, I could even take a, 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 a script and, and create a copy procedure to move data from one point to another, but it's all about the recovery. How fast can you get this system back up and running? And one of the pluses to the recoverability solution is that basically we're looking at fast recovery. We, we understand that people don't want to endure downtime. It's, it's painful. So um, that's kind of what we're looking at with the, all of these products and tying it into having disaster resistance at your fingertips. Now, this screen is talking a lot about what you do locally on site. The next screen right here talks about what you can do with the cloud services and basically um, using an off-site replication. Of course, we're always going to recommend that you use your local backup first in the event of a disaster, but like in Oklahoma, they probably don't have local backups because their entire they went through a site-destroying event. So in this case, they would have need to have some kind of a, a replica of their backups at a geographically independent location. And that's where the cloud services come in, is that basically we have two data centers in the U.S., one in Canada, and these provide you um, a backup of a backup. And in some cases, if you're mirroring them, a backup of a backup of a backup, so that you know no matter what happens, you're going to be able to recover with either file and folder recovery, um, using our StorageCraft Shadow Cloud, which allows you to virtualize your systems, your backup recovery points in the cloud, or even requesting a bare metal recovery drive. So that's where our, our StorageCraft, StorageCraft recoverability solution comes in for our cloud services. Um, some of the benefits for cloud services, uh, obviously we're going to be able to protect your physical and virtual machines, um, also your workstations, your laptops, but this is something that is built so that it's at your fingertips. Um, you have complete control over the data. Uh, you can basically maintain your off-site data retention policies uh, in real time. You can set, you can recover files in real time based on when you need it, not opening a ticket and going through some elaborate process while you wait for the, the data center to, to respond to your request. Um, one of the things that we saw after Superstorm Standy was that um, there was a huge number of requests and the volume of requests were actually inundating a lot of the backup and recovery services out there because they were all human-based recovery systems. They had somebody flipping a switch someplace to make it happen. Well, in this case, we're giving you complete control over this system you go in there, you pull the information you want, when you want it, and all of this stuff is right at your fingertips. You've got instant virtualization, and you can set up VPNs, you can create these in advance. Um, your recovery time is in minutes and hours. It's been amazing for me just spinning up a virtual machine on some demos in our shadow cloud, how quickly I can take a recovery point from any point in time and spin that up as an actual machine running in, in the cloud. And I think that's pretty incredible. Um, one of the things, though, is your disaster recovery solution is only as good as, as it is when you test it. And I think one of the things that I really would like to stress is get out there and test the backup and recovery solution. Know that in the event something happens, you know, you go through a fire drill and you see how these things work, you get your hands dirty, um, your IT staff is getting in there and, and, and pretending that um, power was cut out or they don't have a network access at a certain point or a server uh, melted down or something, and they actually test those scenarios and see that it works. And so having all of this resources at your fingertips allows you to go in there and regular, regularly test your recovery solutions. Some of the other benefits are that we, um, in the StorageCraft cloud services, is that we aggregate your costs so that you basically pay for exactly what you need. It's kind of like a, a buffet. You go in there and, and you don't have to buy, you know, one product for one customer. 
the same product, another copy of it for another customer, and then a third copy for a third customer. Um, you can basically say, here's my disk storage. Um, I need with customers A, B, and C, I need a total of maybe uh, 12 terabytes of data stored in backup recovery points. And so I'm going to aggregate those customers and only pay for the total of data storage that I need. I don't have to pay for additional space that way. We can also, um, you can also increase your storage capacity on the fly as you need it, upgrading your service levels, changing them easily. There is a, a seven-day limitation I'll tell you about a little bit later as far as um, when the change takes place, but, um, but basically that's a matter of uh, capacity on our side and making sure that we um, build out the, the things that you would need as you need it. Um, but as far as increasing storage and everything, those are all very flexible. Uh, and we, we put these in a very safe, secure environment. These data centers that we're using are rock solid hard. I've, I've been on a tour of one and it, it looks basically like a, a bunker. I mean, this thing could survive World War III. It's, it's got its own power and cooling and water and, and everything all maintaining these um, highly available systems and hardware. So it's pretty cool. Um, Steven, yes, sir. Um, if, yeah, it, uh, a couple questions, if you don't mind, from sure. the audience. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, a shout out to Tyler Peetler, who has posted the link up on a popular small business server Facebook page called, you know you grew up with SBS if. So Tyler, appreciate it as always. Uh, the next question from Joe Kramer comes in, does the desktop version support backup of a NAS? Um, yes, the desktop version supports backup of a NAS. Now, uh, what you're going to do is make sure that that shows up as a volume available to the desktop. And then the desktop, when you go through the backup wizard, you'll simply pick the, the volumes that you're going to back up from that desktop wizard, the, the desktop backup wizard. And then you simply point to those volumes, point to your destination, and then um, send the information there. Now, one thing I should point out is you don't want to get into kind of a recursive situation where the NAS that you're backing up is also the NAS that you're storing the backup on because obviously mm -hmm. you're going to end up <laughs> in a problem there. So just realize that you're looking at taking disk image-based backups from these volumes and you're looking at storing them on a separate volume. So, okay, but otherwise, great. yeah. Okay, and, next question is, uh, are the slides available? Um, that's, that's up to the client uh, storage craft. Um, do you make your slides available for this presentation? Yeah, I, I don't see why we couldn't make our slides available for this presentation. Um, I, I think we could do that. Um, I'm not sure where we would put them, though, so uh, perhaps if I can um, yeah, email them out. out. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, I'll, we'll I'll mail, let, them, out I'll email them out with a thank you letter. Yep, we write everybody a thank you letter or an email. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next question, if, if you don't mind, uh, they're coming kind of fast, which is good. Um, you've actually kind of already answered this. Uh, it actually is the next slide. Let me read you the question, and then we'll defer for the fourth question, because you're going to answer this in this slide. The question is, what kind of encryption do you have locally and in the cloud? Um, you're about to answer that. Um, so let's hop down to the next one from George Cabenting. Uh, um, George is asking, on cloud services, do I need a static IP at my company, or do we need one for your site for the cloud virtual machine? So it's a static IP question, Steve. Oh, good, good. And those are great questions, Harry. Um, as you mentioned, I'm going to be answering these in the next few slides. Uh, the, the first one, uh, AES 256-bit, it's a military-grade encryption, is the encryption level that we're using. Um, that's going to make sure that your, your backups are secure. Um, also, we require that if you're going to use our cloud services, that your backup chain also be encrypted. So in order to actually transfer these up to our cloud services, the backup chain locally needs to be encrypted as well. So we do want to make sure that this is as secure as possible. And then as far as um, 
the static IP address, um, if I might, I'll just answer that quickly. Uh, we have the ability, as far as the, the local site goes, no, you don't need a static IP address locally because it's going to be a request out to our data center for transmitting data. And then um, that pinhole is going to be open in any firewall from your side coming out to us for us to respond back. Um, now, and this would be, of course, run through Image Manager locally on your site. So you'd be having Image Manager manage these off-site replications to our StorageCraft cloud services. Now, as far as a static IP address in the StorageCraft cloud services goes, um, you don't need to have a static IP address. Uh, we will, if you were to virtualize a machine or set up a VPN or remote into one of your systems, um, we will give you a dynamic IP address, but we do recommend that you um, consider purchasing a static IP address um, for your account. And this would be a reserved IP address that is allocated to your account permanently. Um, there is a, a monthly fee, I believe it's $8 a month. It, it might be $10. Okay, I, I got a confirmation that it's $8 a month, and this would reserve that IP address um, indefinitely for your account. And then if you wanted to use this as a failover system, you could simply um, create your VPN in the StorageCraft cloud with that static IP address, replicating the same um, web servers, exchange servers, domain controllers, and everything that you have locally, but replicating that environment in the cloud. And in the event that you had a problem locally where the entire site was down, you could simply point to the static IP address that you have reserved in the cloud for all of those resources. So there is an advantage to reserving that static IP address in the cloud services, but you wouldn't need one locally and you don't need to reserve one in the cloud if you're fine with using a, a dynamic IP address. So um, great questions. I really appreciate those. Yeah. And Harry? If you have yeah, more yeah. questions come up, feel free to, to tap me. I, I'd, I'd love to answer those as they come up. Well, I, I, I do. Um, what I'm thinking is uh, a little bit of housekeeping. And by the way, I agree with you, Steve. I've always felt a good webinar. Um, boy, I probably shouldn't share this with a strategic sponsor and partner like StorageCraft, but I will. Um, <laughs> I don't want to bite the ham that feeds me, but I will. But but uh, what, what what I'm getting at is I personally, when I do webinars, you know what? If I don't get through the whole deck because of too many questions, um, good on them, good on the audience. And, exactly. And, and we can and, we, we can send you the deck. <laughs> yep. And, and the the webinar is not for us to sit here and hear ourselves talk. It's for us to to communicate with our audience and and hear what they are interested in and meet those needs for them. So I agree with you 100 percent, Harry. Thank you. Okay. So, well, thank you. So, folks, keep the questions coming via the chat feature. I do have a little bit of a backlog. Maybe what we'll do is knock out a couple slides and then and then revert to questions. But I do want to mention at midpoint that uh, this webinar is not only dedicated to the uh, to the cause uh, regarding the Oklahoma City tornadoes, but if you joined us late um, or you didn't catch it at the beginning. There's a couple of ways you can help. Um, there's a lot of context surrounding what we feel is the best way to help. So, so number one is you can go to storagecraft.com forward slash storm and download uh, the, uh, the software program, a three-day version to assist with your backup and recoverability efforts. Uh, number two, in my research, I, I zeroed in on a central portal, um, ok.gov forward slash OK Strong. Um, and, 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 and again, we, we kind of decide, we encourage you to let the experts do what they do best, just like you do in your day job. So please give cash as you're able. So Steve, let's, let's rock and I'll interrupt you in a couple of slides. OK, thanks, Harry. So just skimming through these slides, um, this one, this slide is showing a lot of the um, information about our primary and secondary U.S. data centers. Uh, probably the highlight here is that it's SSAE 16 compliant, and that's something that people would want to know as far as compliance standards. That's definitely the, the top grade that you'd want to have and ensure that you have that for um, before the, the compliance. Uh, 
before you make any decisions on where you're going to store your off-site data because obviously you want it to be secure. You don't want, um, you want to have complete control over it, the information because it's your data. Um, of course, there's other on-site things like biometric readers and, and um, security guards and all that sort of thing as well. Um, the data center in Canada is much the same as far as the um, specifications. They have one other thing that is um, a certification uh, CSAE 3416 certified. Um, that's something that is a requirement in, uh, for us with our Canada partner. So, um, and, and I also understand that uh, as far as um, seeding the, the information, um, the seed drives in Canada will shortly be sent directly to the Canada data center, which is um, important for Canadian customers. Um, these cloud services come in three tiers. Uh, basically, the, the basic service level is your archival. Uh, that's going to allow you to um, send a seed drive and get a bare metal recovery drive and know that your critical business systems are archived. That's going to be your lowest cost. The Cloud Plus allows you everything in the Cloud Basic Plus you can immediately recover files and folders from the systems. Um, and then the Cloud Premium allows you everything in the Cloud Basic and Cloud Plus, but it also allows you to virtualize your systems in the cloud. Um, those virtualizations are uh, per machine 30 days per year for free. Um, beyond the 30 days, uh, we do expect you to um, to pay a fee for the additional time, but we do want you to be able to get in there and test your systems. So um, we don't consider ourselves a hosting, a web hosting service. So if you were going to virtualize your backups in the cloud and leave them there as a as a hosted service might provide, um, that's not where we are. We want to give you those 30 days for testing, for recovery, and for um, those, need, those needs that you have to get your system locally back up and running. Uh, the same information also is available, the same service levels also is available for Canada. The only difference is that there's only one Canadian data center, so the mirroring is not available as it is in the U.S. And the U.S. Mirror, uh, mirroring is in two geographically independent locations in the U.S. There's one in the Midwest and one on the East Coast. So just so you know that these are this mirroring is um, geographically independent as well. Um, I mentioned earlier that there was... We, yes, sir? Yeah, Steve, why don't we... Uh, boy, I'm, I'm starting to get stuffed on questions, so let's okay. knock out a couple. <laughs> um, it's George again. George, thank you so much for, for being so vocal. George uh, asked on cloud serve... Uh, oh, we already did static IP. Sorry. Next one. Um, George, ask again. Do you offer partners any web or live-based training? Oh, great questions, George. Really appreciate that. Yes, we do. Um, the StorageCraft Academy has um, live and web-based training. Um, you can actually go in there, and I believe they have some specials going on right now that are um, uh, volume discounts for across the board for um, the various parts of their training program. But um, if you look on the storagecraft.com website for the academy, that has your online training. And then also they can schedule for live training so that we can have one of our um, engineers come out there and, and do a group of people and train you hands-on. I know that they also go around the U.S. I'm not sure because they're a different department what their training schedule is. But sometimes they can find that um, there's a few customers in one geographic region that would like training. And so they'll kind of bundle those all together and, and have a, a training seminar presented for those guys. But yes, we absolutely do provide live and um, web-based training. Good questions, George. Okay, we have. Yeah, no, it is. Joe Kramer asked. I, I, I bet I can answer this one, Steve. Let me let me go to shot and then you can okay. correct me. Uh, backup of a NAS, not backup to a NAS. Clarification from Joe Kramer. Joe, here, here's here's. I'm gonna take a stab at this. Um, the, the context of uh, the NAS backup 
um, conversation was to not have a circular reference like I when I fumble finger in an Excel spreadsheet and you get that error of trying to have uh, additive or some kind of equation that incorporates itself. So, Steve, what what I heard you saying is that you you don't want to put the backup of a NAS on the NAS for for the very reason that you're backing up the NAS. Is, yeah. is that is that close to the mark? <laughs> yeah, I think my job security just went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Um, no, uh, yeah, basically because these are image-based backups, the only point I was trying to make was that if you are storing your backup on the same drive that you're backing up the information, then the drive is changing, and basically your backup is changing while you're taking the backup. So um, it's not something you'd want to do. Okay, and then uh, there's there's two more in the queue, folks. Keep them coming. One I'm going to probably ask that we defer on. It's discuss each of the product's cost. That strikes me as something that maybe you'll be getting to or, or we can uh, uh, circle back to at the end. Um, the, the more relevant technical questions for this segment are, uh, we have a gentleman asking, uh, my customers have a mix of physical and virtual servers. Does your software work with virtual servers or just physical? Sir, what's the answer? Oh, great question, Harry. Um, the thing about that is that we really shine because we, we work in both the physical and the virtual environments. Oh, so okay. we're, we're an across-the-board solution. You don't have to have one solution for your virtual machines and a different solution for your physical machines. You can have... Um, one solution all under one umbrella, one one management single pane CMD tool and and see your entire um, enterprise right there from desktops and laptops to servers to virtual systems all of them um, communicating back to it. And the nice thing is that we're running the, the backups as an agent based backup so these agents are actually inside the operating system running in the, the OS stack, and so they have access to change block tracking, they have access to a lot of the information at the operating system level on that device so that they can appropriately get a, a, a reliable backup snapshot, they can get that information compressed, and then transfer that information back to the location where you're, you're storing your backups. So all of this can be handled um, without using up network resources and in a way that, that all of your systems, both physical and virtual, are, are covered. So good questions. Oh, okay, final question for this segment would be, is the local $8 a month static IP purchased from StorageCraft used only for StorageCraft functions or can it be used as a, gener a general or generic static IP for a company? For example, using remote connectivity for the static IP. That makes sense. Okay. Um, well, it's the static IP address. Uh, if I understand this correctly, the question is, can I use this static IP address um, for pointing to something at my company, or is it only going to point to StorageCraft cloud services? Is that the? I, I, yeah, I think so. I think it's it can is. Yeah, let's assume that. And and yes, basically, um, we we are uh, our data centers have reserved these blocks of IP addresses, and so then when we get and these point to our data centers off directly off the national backbone, so these are very high speed um, points pointing to the data center, and so when you reserve that static IP address, it would be available to you in your, your SearchCraft Cloud account and pointing to anything that you have, any systems you have in that account. So it wouldn't be something that you could reserve an IP address for eight or ten dollars a month and then point that to your your local office. It, it would only be available for your StorageCraft Cloud services. Okay, let's let's knock out a few more slides and then we'll circle back. Folks, keep keep asking. Thank you. Okay. The next slide I want to, oh, I did want to talk about this seven-day grace period. And, and basically all this is saying is that if, you're, if you decide because you have this, flexible, this flexibility to change your service level,
let's say that you start out with the basic service level and you're just archiving data there and then you realize at some point down the road hey I'm getting my my clients need more um, resilience they want to be able to virtualize these backups um, this would be great if I could upgrade my basic level of service up to a premium level so I can virtualize in your cloud um, you can do that the, the only difference is that there is a seven-day grace period for this change to take effect and then the change takes effect at the first day of the next month so as an example if I were going to make a change to my service level in the cloud services today on the 23rd then this change would take place on uh, would go into effect on the first day of the month following seven days from now which is the 30th of May so they would go into effect on June 1st but if I waited until after the holiday and let's say well maybe I, I did it on well let's say I waited until after the holiday and I, I did it on the um, today's the 23rd let's say I do it on the 28th of May well my seventh grade day <laughs> yeah my seven day grace period I can speak um, basically pushes me into the first week of June I believe that would be around June 4th June 3rd um, I'm gonna say June 4th that means that the first day of the month following the end of that seven day grace period means the change will take place the first of July so I just wanted to point that out so that people can um, make adjustments to their plan with that seven day grace period in mind so that it takes effect on in this case the first of June instead of a month later on the first of July um, okay uh, seed drives very quickly if you wanted to if you have a whole lot of data um, of course image manager the new version version 6 has bandwidth throttling which is very wonderful because you can schedule um, times during the day of the week hours that you want to have the, the bandwidth throttled on specific systems so that you don't go over a certain amount of bandwidth and then maybe in the off hours you open up that throttle and you just let the bandwidth um, open so that you can replicate everything off-site on the off hours um, but if you wanted to get a lot of the data your initial full backup for example and all the incrementals up to today up to the storage craft cloud services there's a nominal fee of ten dollars to request a C drive we pay for the shipping out to you we provide return shipping and packing back to us and you have the C drive you simply plug it in tell image manager to do the process for for a C drive and then send it back to us and image manager will take that full and the incrementals up to today send them up put them on the C drive and when that C drive returns to the data center um, image manager will marry up any incrementals past that time with the contents of that C drive so very easy very simple the return process is about the same for the bare metal recovery only I believe there's no fee for the return for the bare metal recovery um, just to kind of go over in summary we were talking about on-site and off-site um, site destroying events of course you're going to have most of your on-site um, storage craft image manager storage craft shadow protect CMD all of those managing your on-site but then also you have this this added functionality to kind of make a well-rounded solution of the storage craft cloud services off-site as well and there's the 30-day limit per machine per year that I was talking about for virtualization um, here's the static IP addresses we do recommend static IP addresses uh, storage craft bare metal recovery um, is basically going to give you the ability to recover back to the same hardware or dissimilar hardware or a virtual environment using the, the backup that is stored in our cloud services by the way um, we do have one correction I I wasn't sure I thought it was ten dollars but I said it was eight dollars for the the static IP address earlier it is ten dollars a month for the static IP address just want to put that correction in there um, and, and basically this overall solution is supposed to be giving you the ability to provide a very high-level enterprise service to your customers um, it's easily adopted uh, it gives you recurring high margin revenue um, 
one of my things is that it gives you a very quick recovery using on-site and off-site tools. Um, you also, as I mentioned, can create an aggressive SLA for this, this high level of service because it is a quick recovery and because it is reliable. And as I mentioned earlier, I really recommend that people do the testing. I know that there's a lot of backup softwares out there and I think one of the things about it is that people will buy a cheap version of a, of a software and then you know they'll, they'll trust it and it's, it's fine but there comes the day when they actually have a problem and they need to recover the data and the software doesn't work. And I really believe in the StorageCraft solution because it does work. It's very reliable and if you test it, it'll, it'll prove it to you. You'll see for yourself exactly how reliable it is and it's, it's worth the, the cost to, to get it. So. I just okay. at that point I think we're running out of time Harry so I'm going to hand the time back over to you for any questions we have but yep. if, people, yep. Yep. if people want more information <laughs> cloud.storagecraft.com will tell you more about our cloud services. Absolutely well we have a couple more uh, yeah we have a good couple more questions folks uh, I'm still still taking questions in the queue at this point we will end at 11 a.m. Pacific sharp to kind of honor our commitment to you a 60-minute webinar. Um, so this question comes from Christopher Crank. Uh, Christopher asks, is Shadow Protect SBS updated for Windows Server 2011 slash 12 Essentials? And are the cloud offerings able to integrate with it as well? Update. Um, How's that, Tom? That sounds great. And Christopher, you're going to love the answer because the answer is yes, we are integrated with the latest. Um, uh, the Windows Server Essentials, um, the Shadow Protect version 5 will handle that information. It's um, going to take care of that 64-bit operating system. And also, um, yes, for your second question, that um, we, we integrate that with our cloud services and everything else for virtualization as well. Okie dokie. Uh, a question from Anonymous. Um, can I use your cloud services if I'm not in the partner program? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know what? I would say in the past we've we've offered when we first um, rolled, released our cloud services out, it was only for our MSP partners. And so at that point you had to be part of the partner program. But the nice thing is that we've recently released the cloud services so that it's available through normal distribution channels and now you don't have to be part of the partner program you can simply purchase it's kind of like an iTunes credit and that is applied to your account so um, if you were to go down to the local supermarket and purchase one of those gift cards for iTunes on the back of it would be a, a, a number that you would redeem in the iTunes store same thing happens with our cloud services if you go to cloud storagecraft.com and sign up. You can simply um, purchase a cloud, a, a cloud credit through one of our distribution resellers. Um, Cynix or Lifeboat would be good examples. And then simply apply that credit to your account and that would give you the, um, the ability to use it without being a partner. Okay, next uh, from Tyler. Does oh, and Harry. With I, I was just thinking, Harry, if I could just toss in something really quick. Um, the, the thing about it, though, is that the partner program is free. So um, why wouldn't you be a partner? <laughs> just want to well, point that out. My goodness. Um, and it has additional I, I, training and, and free NFR licenses and all kinds of other stuff, too. So just a consideration. Know, that's, that's a whole, yeah, no, 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 it is. And that's a whole other webinar. Um, I'm... <coughs> I'm actually teaming up with an analyst. I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag and ask people to be patient till July, but I'm teaming up with a well-known analyst. Uh, we're going to do a study in June that analyzes partner programs and kind of discusses fee-based partner programs, free partner programs, what's the difference, what's it mean. So um, appreciate the uh, the mention of that, your, your help. <laughs> okay. I'm already done with storage craft. Uh, check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm going to okay. go listen to that. That sounds like a great webinar, Harry. 
Yeah, yeah. Give me, yeah, give me about 45 days on that study, but it's serious stuff. Um, okay, here's from Tyler. Uh, does it work with, uh, boy, this sounds like a, a sleeping pill I would take on an overseas flight. Um, he's saying Zent, Zent, y'all, Z-E-N-T-Y-A-L. Tyler, that's what I take with a beer to sleep when I fly to Europe. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with that word. Does that make sense to you, Steve? Um, I'm not familiar with that either, but, you know, I would be glad to look that up and get back to Tyler. So Yeah, and Tyler and Steve, do not mix that pill with alcohol. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he, he, asked, he asked another question. Um, seriously, how does this compare to plate spin or Hyper-V live migrations? I know the second part. Tyler is pretty darn smart. Plate spin or Hyper V live migration, sir? Okay, um, I I'm thinking that. Well, I'm not sure on the first one. I, I um, sure, that's fine. But as far as Hyper V migration, um, basically Hyper V migration is going to be the same type of thing. What we're doing is we're taking a, an image-based backup and um, then restoring that to a new system. So it would be essentially the same thing as a Hyper-V migration process. Um, in this case, I assume that the Hyper-V migration is going to be more of a, um, a replication or a high availability. Um, I know that like with Server 2012, when I've been using it, um, it has the ability to, to build in your high availability, your HA um, resources so that your systems are in um, replicated to other hypervisor, um, Hyper-V hypervisor servers so that if you've got your um, server 2012 here in your home office and another one in another office or remote office, you can have them running failover systems or load balancing for your, your virtual machines. Um, I'm assuming that if he's just simply looking at it for the migration aspect, um, they're going to be basically the same. Um, we're going to be able to migrate from one point to another just as well as the, the Microsoft Hyper-V hypervisor tools can migrate from one point to another. The only difference that I see is that this, and I think a lot of people make this, um, this, this uh, thought process, they think of high availability or the fact that I have a copy here and a copy someplace else as being a, um, a backup and recovery solution. And really the, the problem is that if I have a SQL server as a virtual machine on my server 2012 file server here and I migrate that information to another location, I have that same SQL problem and data corruption in that other location. And I really want to draw the distinction that that we can do migration, via migration, and we do it very well. But we also look at it in terms of um, a point in time, a recovery point objective, because the migration tools simply can't go back in time and pull out a, a backup from two months ago and migrate that back up over. It only has what's available currently. So we do what they do and we do some more. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, cool. Well, we just have two minutes left, so uh, w uh, another question and then we'll talk about the cost issue. I have an idea on how to tackle the cost issue, um, but the, 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 the next question is, uh, are the storage craft services available for OSX? That's from Brian Robinson. Brian. Oh, a, a, a Mac user. I like that. <laughs> um, let me just say this. Um, currently, no, but that's, that's, let me underline currently, because we do have on the roadmap um, multiple platform uh, backup and recovery solutions. So keep an eye on us over the rest of this year, because you'll see some announcements coming out in the next month or two with regards to alternate operating systems as well. But currently we are supporting all of the Microsoft operating systems that are available, except for things like, you know, Windows 3.1 back in the day. But basically, um, <laughs> that would be really old. I hope nobody's running Windows 3.1 anymore. 
But yeah, all of the currently supported Microsoft operating systems, we are also supporting those as well. Super. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, no, good, good question. And Steve, what I'm going to recommend, and uh, if you could get the information over to myself or uh, Heather, um, we're going to craft a thoughtful uh, thank you email where I'd, I'd recommend we lay out the cost um, in an email with a, a link for more information. That's okay. a big question. We are at time, folks, so I want to highlight a couple of things. First of all, thank the attendees on this Thursday, this holiday Thursday in the U.S. Uh, for taking time out before uh, we hit the real holiday weekend that everyone's pretty darn excited about. Um, remember that this webinar was, was not only uh, dedicated with our, our hearts and minds to the uh, Oklahoma um, City tornado matter, the, the, the tragedy that just occurred on Monday. Um, and as part of that, uh, you can go to storagecraft.com forward slash storm to download a three-day version of their software to assist with your recovery efforts. Um, and we're also recommending for that you give generously to the charity of your choice. Folks, cash is best. Uh, like I say, I took probably more time than I should have, but I was happy to do so yesterday in talking to people that know what they're talking about in terms of foundation and grant giving and charitable giving and disasters and so on. And bottom line is cash is best. If you need to uh, find the best charity that makes sense for you, I would recommend you go to the clearinghouse site of ok.gov forward slash OK strong, and we'll also get the deck out to you. So, so Steve, with that said, if you're good, I'm good, and we'll let these people return to the salt mine. I'm good, Harry. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody. I really enjoyed being part of this with SMB Nation. Absolutely. Folks, have a great holiday weekend in the U.S. And you know what? Take a three-day weekend everywhere else as well. It's on me. Bye-bye. <laughs>